Good morning and welcome to the Lighthouse Missionary Baptist Church. We are glad to have you in our midst. And we were blessed that you chose to tune in to our service on this Lord's Day. Sit back. Your ten doors. Let the Spirit use you as we praise and worship the King. A call of worship. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you shall perish. But you put an end to everyone who is faithful. I invite you to read along with me as we read the church covenant. And we should be followed by the singing of hymn number one. Holy, holy, holy. Our church covenant. <clears throat> Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers and services above every organization of human origin to sustain his worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards the expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the belief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion to study diligently the Word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world. Be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in the service we promise others. Endeavor in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not need needlessly exposing the infirmities of others to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy, bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of our Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay, and through life, a medieval report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. <clears throat> Hymn one, holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, 
song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crown around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down prepare to go before God in prayer on this Lord's Day. I appeal to everyone as I always do to not forget those we love, those we work with, those we see in the street as we travel through this life. Our neighbors, our good friends, that we lift them all up before God's throne of and grace and mercy because we have the sickness in our families. We have financial distress in our families. We have mental anguish and mental issues in our families. We have many things going on within our family structures that we need and should take before God in prayer. And those that we pass as we journey through life, they may not call out to us, but we can rest assured that not only do they stand in the need of prayer, but that they desire that we take them before God's throne of integration and mercy. So let us pray. 
but she's a bad across the lawn and all the world will be free. Though there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross just for me. We thank you, Father, for those crosses that keep us grounded, that keep us focused on what matters most in life. We thank you for those crosses that does not allow for us to get out of hand, but keeps us where we need to be. Hold on to your loving and outstretched hand. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. We thank you for resting my sleep. We thank you most of all, Father, for being who and what you are. A great and mighty God that reigns supreme over the heavens and the earth. The one that even though he reigned supreme glory, you look low to see about your children here on this earth. We thank you, Lord, for your many bountiful blessings. Many of the blessings that we often discount or don't or don't pay any attention to as we journey through life. But we thank you, Lord for the small blessings. We thank you for the medium-sized blessings. And we thank you for the large blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for the greatest blessing of your son coming and dying on, on Calvary's cross in our stead, that through his death and his resur resurrected life, that we might we ran it eternal life that we might receive salvation through his work on the cross. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who resides with us now that your son's back in glory with you. We thank you how the Holy Spirit continues to guide us, continues to lead us from the path of danger and destruction. We just thank you, Lord, for all things and we leave, Lord, all of our, all of our member, many family members on your throne this morning. Those who are family members that who are sick, those who are struggling, those who are trying to make sense of their current situation in life. We leave a greater society on your throne, Lord, as the killings continue. The violence goes unabated. We leave the greater world on your throne, Lord, as the atrocities continue in Ukraine. They continue in Africa as the, these radical Muslim groups still are attacking and killing Christian men, women, and children. We just leave the greater good, Father, on your throne. Recognize that there's not much we can do. But you can do all things except to fail. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. And through us, Father, we thank you for what you're going to do even throughout the world. But even in our praising and thanking you, Father, we recognize that we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. Run by it. We're at action or deed, Lord. Something said or done. We're ashamed, Father, to your holy and righteous name. And as a result, Father, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your cleansing. We ask, Father, for your strength. As we continue to journey down this road that we call life, have your way, Father, as only you can. Continue to place your mighty hand upon the lighthouse. As we continue, Lord, in our mission and ministry to reach out, to give back, to meet the needs of the people in this community as you bless us to do. Bless us as we plan for our upcoming COVID giveaway, the food giveaway the first Saturday in June, and our continuing planning for our annual community awareness and ministry outreach day. We give you glory right now, Father. We give you the praise for what you want to do through these two upcoming events. Have your way, Father, as we move throughout the rest of this day. Then we ask that you prepare us for this coming week. The 
because <clears throat> we do not know what lies in store for us, but we do realize and embrace this one truth, that as long as we're walking hand in hand with you, we have nothing to fear. Bless, strengthen, and keep us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Me and on everlasting arms, hymn 211. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, meaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, all we ever last seen on leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, share just a few minutes from the thought, poof, positive. Poof, positive lighthouse is a phrase that means definite evidence or conclusive proof that something is true or correct. In any case, information or facts that leave no room for doubt. With that thought in mind, we live in a society where we are of people for the most part that instinctively need proof about everything in life. 
whether it's about people, places, events, or things, one's word simply is not enough. There must be proof or evidence to back up one's claim. It is understandable to a certain extent in this climate of mass fraud, theft, and false teaching, which is so prevalent today, especially for unsuspecting people who become caught in its grip. That proof positive is needed. The time of a man's word or a person's word being his or her bond or solemn promise has given way to the need for proof positive as honesty has been replaced with dishonesty, greed, and evil agendas. After the resurrection of Christ, our Savior made strategic appearances to selected individuals or groups of people. While the Jewish Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin were sure to put a lid on any talk about Jesus being alive, God had other plans. He carefully planned the post-resurrection appearances of Christ to show that our Savior indeed was alive and that scriptures had been fulfilled. In John chapter 20, verse 19 to 23, Jesus appears to his disciples for the first time since his resurrection. If you remember, the disciples were hiding behind locked doors in fear of the Jewish Sanhedrin or the Jewish leaders. When Jesus appeared before them, to speak with them. The Bible tells us that Jesus shows them physical evidence of his crucifixion. Then gives the men a partial measure of the Holy Spirit. He had to give them that evidence. Like after he, he knew that there would be some doubters in the midst. So evidence that was proof positive would change any of the mindsets that might have been prevalent at that particular time. Jesus' appearance in the locked room shows us that his resurrected body was not blocked by any physical barrier. While the Bible does not specifically say, we can imagine and almost be reassured or assured that the disciples must have been taken aback by the appearance of Christ. If you recall, Lighthouse, when the disciples seen Jesus walking on the water towards them, they were terrified and afraid, thinking that they had seen a ghost. So likewise, it makes sense that they were startled to see him appear alive and well. In the locked room where they were in hiding. This passage, like how underscores that Jesus, through his resurrection, inaugurated a new era of life. Not just life after death but a life of wholeness, purpose, and hope, which begins now and extends into eternity. It encouraged us to move beyond the boundaries of fear and doubt, to embrace the new life that Jesus has to offer us. There are three powerful truths and lessons that we can embrace from Jesus' post-resurrection appearances. The first was a demonstration of his return and love. Jesus showed that he would, turn, he would return, that is, and reclaim each of us to himself. His inner circle initially struggled to understand his teachings about his death, but his appearances after his resurrection 
reassure them of his continued presence in their lives and his care. Second, Christ's love is unwavering. It doesn't stop. It doesn't take a vacation. It doesn't pick and choose who and what it will love. And his promises endure. He predicted that he will be turned over to into the hands of sinners, killed and raised from the dead in three days. And like God, his promises are always fulfilled. Third was the personalized encounters. Each appearance by Christ to his inner circle was personalized. Whether it was Thomas touching his wounds or Mary recognized him at the tomb. Jesus met them where they were emotionally and spiritually. Jesus knows us individually and meets us in our unique circumstances. We may not think so, Lighthouse, because God does not operate on our time frame or our time schedule or bless us in our initial time of need. And because he doesn't come when we expect him to come, many times we don't think that he is concerned about our needs about our shortcomings, about our sufferings in life. But he does indeed, in his own time and frame, meet our each and every need in this life. Last, Jesus gave specific blessings and instructions to the first witnesses of his resurrection. These were not random by any means as they had a, a specific purpose in God's overall plan for the salvation of mankind. Our mission is clear today, Lighthouse. We must share the gospel. We must serve others and rely on the Holy Spirit because we cannot fulfill God's commands in and of our own selves or on our own accord. The takeaway as we close is this. And it's very clear. Jesus' post resurrection appearances remind us of his love, his personalized care, and his purpose, purposeful mission for his followers. Let us embrace these truths and continue to follow him faithfully. The bottom line of my house is that people all around us are counting on us to bring a word of comfort, to break forth for them the gospel of Christ, to bring them a sense of hope. People around us are Count on us to come out and minister to them in their time of need. And just as God has been faithful to us, He requires us to be faithful in our suit, our service to and for Him. <coughs> our children are counting on us. Our nieces and nephews are counting on us. Our neighbors are counting on us. Those we pass on the corners of this life, they're counting on us. Those we see in the mall or in the store are counting on us. They need to see Christ in us and to know that there is hope. Because if Christ blesses us and does for us, they can recognize that Christ will do the same for them. Proof positive. Jesus showed him 
by showing his wounds to the disciples, his side, his hands, and his feet. We need proof positive before we elect people in our homes or make a decision to commit to something financially or emotionally. We need proof positive before we step into something that we might regret later on. I know for myself and I see these ads and things pop up on online or on my phone, I am hesitant to even follow through and see what it says. You saw the day I made a little donation to the Biden campaign, but it took me a while to make that decision because you don't know if the emails are legit. You have to do your due, due diligence, I mean, told guys today, to make sure everything is as it ought to be. Christ knew that his disciples would need proof positive to believe, just as he knows that we won't take things on at um, the word's worth. People can say and do what they want, but unless and until they prove beyond a shadow of doubt, what they're saying is true and honest. We will not embrace it. We will not move out in a way that will put us in danger or in harm's way. Too positive. We may constantly need something to be proved to us before we step out. But one thing we don't need proof positive of is what Christ did for us. The proof is in the pudding, as the saying goes. They nailed to the cross, they buried him in the tomb. On the third day he rose from the, the grave with all power in his hand. We don't need no proof about that. He came and he gave his life as he said he would. He rose again on the third day as he predicted he would. That's all the proof that we need. But I say this to you, to be careful as you journey through life. To make sure that you always have proof positive before you open your checkbook. Before you enter the numbers of your credit card or debit card online. Before you share anything of importance with another person. Satan is busy out here. But God wants you to know what he did to his son Christ Jesus for us it speaks for itself. For those that God is sending us out to to minister to and to share the word of God with they will need food positive. But they'll see it in us before we even get close enough to the whole conversation. Because Christ will be beaming from us in such a way they know that we are, we are genuine. And the proof is definitely in the proof. Proof positive. As we prepare to close our service, our Facebook live stream service, we again want to thank those who may be tuning in and thank those that will be turn, tuning in as the day progresses or even into this coming week. We thank God for your due diligence and uh, your commitment, commitment here to the Lighthouse. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. We want to take this moment to open the, the doors of the church and to issue out the call to discipleship to those that may be kneeling, we just say something to you. God is tugging on your heart this morning. When you feel a burden that you just can't shift. Just know that it's God reaching out to you. 
call you, pull on the, uh, the strings in your heart to come and give yourself over to me. And so very briefly, we just say, if you have not received Christ as Savior, or if you are in, in churches, or you've been away for many, many years, and those so uh, you no longer have any faith left in, in God and Christ Jesus, God wants you to know that He's calling you. He wants you to be a part of his family. He wants you to receive him as Lord and Savior. And those traveling the fence who have been in between the churches for a while, that you might come back and uh, join, reunite with a, a congregation. Uh, it doesn't matter what happened in your previous church. God wants you to be a part of the fellowship that you might be prayed for, that you may be lifted up and equipped to do his will and for those who have been away for a very long time. God simply wants you to know that that faith is still there. You may believe that it's no longer there, but it's just pushed down so far that you do not recognize. That that faith you have once upon a time is still with you. May God bless you and smile upon you. And as always, we'll see you in the same place, same time, same station. All right.